In business, we gather a variety of contact information from a variety of sources. It may be put directly into worksheets or may be exported from another business system into a format that Excel can use. All contact information will share some common fields, and those include fields like first and last names, addresses, telephone numbers and email addresses, and possibly dates, such as when an employee was hired, when a vendor was last paid, or when a customer started doing business with us. These lists may be short, but hopefully will become longer as our business grows. The longer the list gets, the more difficult it can be to manage. That is, until you know some of the tips and tricks and the tools that are also available when using the table feature to manage this type of data in Excel. We have the employee list file open from the Chapter 2 Working Files folder. It's not a long list, but has enough information that we will be able to both work with it easily, as well as see how table tools can be utilized and beneficial. Right now, this list is a little difficult to read. It's kind of hard to follow it across the screen because there's a lot of columns to follow. And it, frankly, is also a little boring. Well, formatting does not have a lot to do with the quality of data in a worksheet, but it certainly can make extensive lists of data easier to read. And it also makes it visually more exciting. And if we can get our viewers more excited to look at our data, that's always a good thing. So we've decided that we want to format this data as a table. This is not only going to give us instant, flexible formatting, even as a list grows, but will provide other features that will make working with the list easier as well, including the ability to quickly and easily sort and filter, make use of the totals row, and a lot of calculation tools that make them quicker, easier, and Excel more stable and efficient. Fortunately, creating the table to gain all of these advantages is a matter of only a few clicks. First of all, we need to make sure that our cursor is somewhere in the table and make sure that we have selected the Home tab. Then we'll move over to the Styles group, choose Format as Table, select any format that we find pleasing, and give it a click. This will bring up a window, and we should see the marquee or the marching ants surrounds all of our data. We also want to make sure that My Table Has Headers is selected, and we'll click or tap OK. That's it, my friends. We have just created a table, and all of those benefits, all of those tools that go along with tables, are instantly in place. As soon as we have a table selected, we get a single contextual tab called the Table Tools Design tab. And from here, we can do a lot of things. For example, we can use checkboxes to make things like the first column or the last column stand out. We also can turn on something called the total row by checking that box. This gives us a very fast and very easy way to do some basic calculations. Things I like to call the big five, like sum, count, average, minimum, and maximum. You'll see that it automatically wants to try to sum the very last column, which in our case is a phone number. That's not going to do much good, but maybe what we can do is simply find out how many employees we have. We could do that by clicking in any one of the columns. Clicking on the drop down that appears once we select a cell from the total row and choose the function that we want. In this case, we want to perform a count. And now we can see that we have a total of five employees in the list. Another part of the functionality that's enabled when we have a table selected is the ability to sort and filter. Again, with only five employees, this may not be a big deal, but if we had a lot of them, we might need to sort or filter them for any variety of reasons. By using the in column drop downs at the very top in our header rows, we can simply display the drop down and sort ascending or descending. So, with just a couple of clicks, we can sort by department. And then, if we were curious about who's been with us the longest, we could sort newest to oldest or oldest to newest. Likewise, we could filter. So, if we were only interested in seeing people that were part of our IT department, again, we display the drop down, select the value by which we want to filter using the checkboxes. Click OK. And we can easily see that only two people are part of IT. Notice that our total row functions also are appropriate for what is currently displayed. So instead of showing all five of our employees in our account, it now only shows the two that are applicable for our filter. To remove a filter, we can go back to the dropdown and choose to clear the filter. It's very useful to recognize that filters are also context sensitive. So if we work with a text field, we'll have text filters, a date field will have date filters, and numeric fields will have numeric filters. For example, if we look at the filters for hire date, 
We can choose to use the checkboxes to filter for specific values, or we can choose from a series of predefined date filters before or after certain dates, between certain dates, and even some very specific things like tomorrow, today, yesterday, next week, this week, last week, next month, this month, last month, next quarter, this quarter, last quarter, or even next year. You get the idea. So filtering as well as sorting are both very easy to do once we have the tables enabled. All right, that's all very useful and nice, but one of the first things we notice is that all of our employee names are located in a single cell. It has their first name and their last name, and they appear in all capital letters. While they certainly may be usable this way, it does make some tasks more difficult, and the all capitals just isn't correct for most business uses, although this is often how we get information into Excel when it's exported from older systems. We want all of our data to be separated as much as is logical, in other words, first and last name, and for it to be in proper case. If we want to concatenate things back together again, or have it in all caps some other time, that's easy enough to do. Right now, we want it correct for general use. We always want to think of the future and how data can be used for other purposes, not just how we want or may need to use it now. So we've decided that now is a good time to separate these names and fix the capitalization. Now, don't worry, I am not a good typist, and I have no intention of retyping these names, even though there's only five of them. It's not a big deal with only five, but with a hundred or a thousand or ten thousand, that just isn't the smart way to work. So we'll use Excel features instead, specifically some text functions. As their name implies, text functions are used to manipulate text entries in one way or another. They're very powerful, and in my experience, very underutilized. We can use text functions to do three things all at once. Actually, we're using three separate text functions, but we're going to put them all together so they carry out all of their functions at one time. What we want to do is have it set to the proper case. Instead of all caps, we only want the first letter capitalized. The second thing is we need to find the space that divides the first name from the last name. And the third thing is to use that space and display everything to the left of the space as the first name and to the right of the space as the last name. This is the way that we did it for many years, and it's still very useful for separating values, especially those brought in to Excel from other sources where the data isn't as clean as we'd like it to be. So what we're going to do is start creating these calculations. But before we do that, we have to make a space. So let's right-click on column B and choose Insert and select cell B2. And this is where we want to put the first name for Ian Wilson. This is a function, so we need to start with the equal sign. We're going to nest three functions, so we kind of have to think in reverse order, if you will. The first thing we want to do is set the entry to the proper case, meaning with an initial capital letter and all the rest in lower case. The name of this function is proper. We can see that all we need to designate is what text we want to put into proper case. But it's not quite that easy, because we want to put only part of it into proper case. We want to pull the leftmost information from the left side of the space. So we're going to now start a second function called left. The left function has one required argument and one optional argument. First, we have to tell it what text to pull from the left. This, of course, is the entry in A2. The second argument isn't quite as easy because we don't know the left of which position. We need Excel to find where that space is. So now we're going to start our third function, which is the search function. The search function has two required arguments, what text to find and within what text it should find it. The first argument is the text, which is a space, and we always put text into double quotes. So we'll do double quote, space, which is the actual text, and then a second double quote. The second argument is what text to search, and that, of course, is back to good old A2. Now we can actually finish this out with three closing parentheses. Kind of working backwards, we said, first of all, find where there's a space in the entry in cell A2. Once you know that number, then pull the text to the left of that position and put it into proper case and put the whole thing into our current cell, which is cell B2. Let's press enter. And there we go. It successfully has pulled Ian from Ian Wilson and put it into proper case. Because we have this in a table, notice it automatically filled the function down for us. We didn't have to do any copy and paste. 
That makes it fast, and that makes it easy. We've created a table, and we've started some text functions. In part two of this topic, we'll go ahead and work some more magic as it relates to our contact management in Excel.